Hey, welcome to Tools on Tech, and today I wanted to talk about Logseek plugins and then my top five most used plugins in particular. I'm gonna talk about more plugins though because there's free plugins that I think that should be just in Logseek by default, and I think most people have those installed, so I take them out of my top five. Now, if you've never used plugins in Logseek before, a quick recap on where to find them and how to install them. There is a table of contents, so if you know this already, you can skip on to the next bit. And when you're in Logseek, you can go to plugins and within plugins, we have the marketplace. And here you can browse to your heart's content and all you need to do is click install. And this will install the plugin and make it available to you. Easy as that. And you can then find your plugins back in your installed plugin list. Now, if you wanna check if you have any updates for your plugins, you used to be able to go here and then check for update at every individual plugin. But if you got a recent version of Logseek, you can do it for all of them at the same time, but it is a bit hidden. So if you go to like these small dots on the side here, there's a check all updates, and that will go through all your updates and check if there's any updates to install. Finally, we click on update all selected, and that will fetch it easy peasy get the new version. Then we get to the must have plugins. These are not even optional to me. They're basically installed everywhere. I think most of you already have these up and running. So the first plugin I wanna talk about is the journal calendar plugin. It's a super simple plugin. You can find it in the top here and it just shows you a calendar and allows you to quickly go to a specific day in your journal. Now, while I usually just scroll down in my journal to go back a couple of days, as soon as I need to get to like a specific day, like a couple of months ago, this is a godsend. Also, I use it if I wanna write something to my future self. So if there's something on a specific day where I just have a couple of notes that I wanna be exactly reminded about that day, I just go ahead in time in this plugin and click on the day and just type something there. And then at the day itself, I'll format it and make it nice. But it's something I use all the time to just have a quick calendar overview and to look forward in the future or the past. Then the second plugin I'm gonna talk about is the tags plugin. Now, I already talked about this plugin in my last video comparing tags versus pages. So I'm not going to dive into deep. I'll put a card up here where you can see it, but you can find it here and it shows you the most and least used tags in your graph. So you can quickly either clean out the ones that you're not really using or find your top tags and filter them out or look at them. And last but not least, we'll get to the bullet threading plugin. And it's actually a small CSS hack that came from a different theme, but they put it in a plugin. And everybody keeps asking me about this because it's super useful. So if you install it, what it does is it adds this line when you're working on a piece of text showing you which elements are the parent for that line. And that's super useful because if I mark in this example, the top one with hashtag idea, I don't need to do that for the line two down because both will come back in the hashtag ID page. It's one of those ease of life things that I think should just be in Logseek by default because it's essential to how Logseek works where all the parents are related to their children. So now we get to my top five plugins that I use on a daily basis. So the first plugin from my personal top five is the Interstitial journal I can't pronounce it I can't remember it but I need it all the time so I'll just scroll and find it whenever I'm in a clean install and what it means is that you are journaling throughout the day so anytime you take a break or have a short moment you write down the current time and then add like what you're doing or what you're stopping or you know your current thoughts and the only problem with that way of working is you have to constantly type the time. And that's what this little plugin does. It creates a simple control T command, which I can use and then it adds the current time, bold it, and I can say like, you know, working on A. This saves me a ton of time in the day. I tried solving it in other ways with other plugins. I'm currently not a plugin writer, but I'm glad Alex took the time to make something like this. He also added a Control Shift T function, which does the same thing, but then it adds it as a header. Um, I personally don't use it. I map the Control Shift T to another function that I use. So 
that's fine. But the Ctrl T function saves me a ton of time. And I love these small plugins that really tune Logseq towards my personal workflow. And then I am a stifler for Vim. Um, I've been using Vim, the text editor, for a long time. And then, of course, we get to the following plugin, and that is the Vim Shortcuts. Now, it's important to recognize that there's two Vim packages in the marketplace. I got those two confused. In the beginning, there's Vim Editor and Vim Shortcuts. And the one I'm talking about today is Vim Shortcuts, and it has a lot of small tricks that I love using, so I'm gonna go through a couple of them. Now, there's a lot of things that I love about the Vim plugin. First of all, I can move up and down using J and K. And then another one that I use a lot is I can use O to add a line under, or I can use Shift O to add above. This is super useful when I'm typing and I just need to add like a line on the top or the bottom. Another thing is the copy and paste function from VI. So I can go somewhere and press D twice to remove a line and then go down and say like, hey, I would like to add the line under this by pressing P for paste. And then again, the shift thing works. So if I do shift P, it copy pastes it, but puts it above it. Um, if you don't want to remove the line, you can do exactly the same thing by yanking it. So I go here pick the header, press the Y key twice, and then it gets yanked into memory and I can use P to paste it somewhere where I need it. This saves me tons of time and I love it because it brings my favorite editor and moves into Logseq. Now it adds a lot of other functions, things like pressing the S key to search the current set. So if I type in cat and I wanna search for cat on Google, I press S G and that will open my browser and show me cat pictures of it. Now, another feature from Vim Shortcut that I don't use often enough, but find super powerful is the mark function. So I can go, hey, I'm working on this specific page and I wanna put that in memory. So I press one M and you get a mark one saved. And then I can, I just go somewhere else, like go towards my journal or any like it. And then I press one and single quote, and it goes back to the thing that's memorized. And that's super powerful because you can have an unlimited number of marks. I don't think my hat will be able to manage, but just having two or three when I'm switching between different locations really helps me to jump through my Logseq graph. There's a lot of other functions in it. Um, I'm not going to talk about all of them because I think this thing needs a dedicated video if you want to talk about that, but you should definitely go through the help page and find out all the commands that you get by installing this plugin. And then I have the Logseq merge page plugin. And initially I was ignoring this plugin because if I rename a page to an existing page, Logseq will already offer me to merge those pages. So I thought, why would I need this specific plugin? But this thing does a couple of tricks. And one of its main tricks is that it doesn't only combine it, but it also creates aliases for it. So say for example, let me make two pages. So to give an example of the merging, I've got two pages here, cat and cats, and I wanna merge those pages. Now I wanna merge cats into cat. I go to the cats page, go to merge, say add page in the from section because I wanna get this to words cat, go back towards the cat page and say, hey, I wanna merge too. And then I can say merge and create aliases. And then the aliases is the part that I really love because very often I have like multiple names for the same thing and I wanna combine them into one page but I still wanna be able to find them on both the names because there was a reason why I initially created the two separate names that meant the same thing. And as you can see right now, it not only created the alias for it, so the pages were combined, it puts the data together, and it also puts like a note showing like when the merge happened so you can later find out what you were doing and how it got merged. It's a super useful plugin. It has another feature that I don't use very often but think is awesome is that you can say merged linked blocks so if you're making a lot of block entries into your journal for example and you all mark them with the same thing you can then later get them into one page so in this example that i'm going to show i made a couple of entries now normally of course you would make these all over your journal over multiple days and i all put them there as a hashtag merge example now if we go to that page and i have like these references on the bottom 
I can go here and say like, hey, get me all those blocks and put them in the page. So one of the reasons I do this is if I want to research a topic, I would give it a project name. I would start collecting data in my journal over time. And then after like a couple of weeks of collecting data, I would go to the page and say, fetch me all those texts, put it in the page, and then I can just edit it. I can just go through this and make it into a nice page by cleaning up all the references that I have. Um, it doesn't remove the original ones, so your data stays there, but it is helping me with my workflow when I want to combine research over time. The only problem I have with this specific thing, and that's why I can only use it once, is it will re-merge everything if I use it again. So it doesn't know that you already merged something because it doesn't store it anywhere, meaning that you can only use it for that first time to set up the initial document, and after that you'll have to use normal methods where you go for your linked references, shift click on it to put it on the side and then just type over your data to get into your final notes. So the next plugin I want to talk about is Helium and Helium is more of an add-on to something that I already use a lot in Logseek. So in Logseek, um, when I want to annotate a video, so I'm adding a video and then you can watch the video. And then within Logseek, I can press Ctrl Shift Y and that will add a timestamp so you can make notes. Now, if you play the video and then while it's playing, so let me move this one from a stuttering mind to like somewhere in the video. And I go here and I press Ctrl Shift Y and add a timestamp and you can add like a quick note to it. Awesome stuff, and this is all part of Logseek itself. But the problem that you have is that if you keep adding notes, then slowly but surely it becomes kind of hard to watch the video. And so that's where Helium comes in. I can right click on it and say start float. And then if I do the same thing and I move down, I can keep making notes because, well, it just stays in the screen. And that means that I can keep going downstairs and making the set and of course Ctrl shift y still works so you can still make timestamps helium helps a lot when i want to annotate videos and i have a lot of notes definitely on the bit longer videos that you see a lot in the loxy community where we're talking in depth about a lot of things that takes an hour that's going to be a lot of notes and the only way to keep that track and clear in my head is loxy and helium So the last plugin you might have already noticed is that I got a couple of pictures on every page and that is the banners plugin. And what the banners plugin does is it adds a banner image and an icon to every page. And the latest version even added a couple of widgets, though I personally usually switch them off because I'm easily distracted and having like a calendar and the weather there just gets me out of the flow. But a simple image and an icon, however, really helps me to stay like in the mood instead of like looking at a wall of text and just glazing off my HDHD just needs something to energize my brain. You can customize the header by specifying your own banner images. You just need a URL and add a banner property to the page with the URL. And you have like the icon property where you can put any emoji in and that will change the icon. Love the plugin also for its simplicity, even though they made it a little bit more complex with the widgets being able to configure it and move it around means that it's all optional and if it's something that you really like having a calendar in view when you're in the calendar page for example then it's absolutely amazing i use it all the time uh, but i don't enable it for my individual pages mostly because i really like to have the screen real estate i just switch it on for a couple of pages where I'm either in a longer project and I want to get like immediately into the feel for it. I love it for holiday pages because I can put pictures up in the front for where I want to go. Uh, and that gets me into the mood of like, oh yeah, I really needed to add something here. Those were my top five plugins that I use in Logseek. Is there any plugin I missed that you think is absolutely amazing? Be sure to mention it in the comments down below and I will give them a test drive to see if I can add them to my workflow and probably add them to a video that says plugins that I used in 2023 or end of 2022. Remember, you're awesome. Keep it up and see you in the next one.